you know, the, the last several weeks have <clears throat> have been as chaotic as anything I've ever seen in my career. I mean, it's it's just been complete and total madness. And there's been a high premium on those types of items, on one tenth ounce gold eagles, on junk silver. <clears throat> there are a lot of people who are taking this environment to the worst possible level. And that's without any prodding or without any input from, from me. When I talk to people, there are a lot of people believe that the bottom could fall out for a period of time. <clears throat> when you talk about junk silver, this is something that hasn't been made for 60 years or whatnot. And so finding it is hard enough as it is. They say there's no bull market like a gold bull market or a metals bull market for one reason. It's the only market that appeals to your, your concern. And so, no one wants to go back into fiat. No one wants to send their junk silver back and trade it for something else. This is what they've been waiting for. This is what they see. All of the things that have concerned them materializing at once. And that's why they say there's no a bull market like a metals bull market, because the higher the price goes, the more difficult the product gets, only seeks to strengthen the motivation that was used or employed to go this direction in the first place. I think that's pretty much it. When you look at equity bull markets, the idea is to take your winnings and, you know, play with the house's money and re reposition it somewhere else into another asset or another security or whatever it may be. It's not the case with this. And it's a limited supply. It's a finite supply. It fits hand in glove with what I've been saying for quite some time as the little boy who cries wolf that the market will define itself by an inability to source product. That is what junk silver is. It's a finite supply and when it's gone, it's gone. Now you could draw the same analogy to the United States Mint and the other five mints around the world. When they run out of product, it's game over. So, you know, this is where my thought process has come from. It's always gone to the point that there's such a small interest in metals in this market that when the mainstream wakes up as they are right now, not only because they're terrified of what they're seeing here inside the country with the brain dead monetary policy or, or the ridiculous decisions that, that the treasury has made regarding who lives and who dies in the banking system, that's certainly part of it, no question. But, but also the awakening of the states, the, the states that like Missouri and Idaho and Wyoming and Texas and all of these states that are now issuing or allowing gold and silver to be part of state treasuries and even taking it further and using them for all debts, public and private. The state of Texas now talking about issuing a digital gold back alternative. This is awakening the constituents of these states. This is awakening the mainstream little by little by little at a time when people are really afraid. You know, junk silver is the ultimate vehicle for for barter, for, for, for fear premium. Uh, and I think that's why you're not seeing it. And quite frankly, I don't expect much of it to come flowing out into the into the system maybe if silver goes much much higher but it's just it's been a problem to get now for for the better part of the last three years we've had times where we get some when someone sells some or we're able to find it but in general it's it's really tough to find people who own the the pre-65 silver are the the real diehards that understand really what precious metals represent. They're the people who buy it for the right reasons. Back in 2020, and offered it as a special that was like under $2 an ounce or somewhere in that neighborhood over melt value. You know, I haven't looked lately, but I would think it's eight or $9 an ounce over the price of silver. It's that hard to come by. That's really the issue is that, I guess call it what it is, you know, these people who are asking about it are somewhat late to the party. Unfortunately, so the selection is not as extensive as we would like it to be. I know we have some half dollars and you can buy some silver dollars, and but the, the pre-65 dimes and quarters is, um, it's really just becoming a, a situation of, of there not being much of any availability within the industry. Dependent upon what happens on, on a macro scale. I mean, we're seeing so many things happen, you know, when I started talking about the BRICS nations and, you know, I was screaming for three years about what's happening globally. 
and no one really talked about it but me. When you see our allies like Mexico quietly leave the room, it's bad enough that Saudi Arabia has signed a protection agreement with Russia, has told the folks at Davos that they're open to taking other currencies for oil, but now they've joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a dialogue partner. That is the first step of being a full member. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a military group as well as an economic group. You are in essence setting the table to be protected by Russia and by China. You look at our allies like Macron who from France, and if you remember you know, in, in 2022, France was one of the original allies that stood by us in our sanctioning of Russia. And now they're quietly leaving the room. They did a very large liquid natural gas trade with the United Arab Emirates and China a week or two ago, all of it to settle in the Yuan. But now they just did a very large deal. Yeah, Macron was in China and they uh, signed a 51 point declaration, joint declaration from that ranged, as the article said, from military in, or from 5G to military engagement. What? France is signing a deal with China all the way up through military engagement. It, it is beginning to seem as though even our allies are beginning to choose sides. This is 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 a frightening thing. I think it, it is it is speeding up. You have Brazil, who just the second largest exporter of corn in the world, said all of their trade with China will be in Yuan. So these things are speeding up exceedingly. And whether you look at the problems that happen inside the country with really a fuse being lit underneath the commercial banks for $1 trillion over has been pulled out of the, the regional banks in the last week. You are witnessing the destruction of the regional banks. There's 5,000 of them. They represent 70% of all the small business loans. They hold the majority of all of the commercial real estate loans, not the big skyscrapers, but everything else, which is dying. And they are blowing things up on the inside. We are blowing things up already on the outside. And you can see the reaction, counter reaction with all of the countries aligning and forming sides and alliances. And if anyone's waiting for a pullback at this point, I mean, wake up with all due respect, wake the hell up. Right? I say that with all respect. I mean, you've lost that ability to cost average, which every single time someone came to me and said, what should I do? Should I spend it all now? I'd always say no, cost average. And I meant it. But I do really believe that honestly, with sadness that we are getting to that point where it's very close to breaking, whether it be inside or whether it be outside, um, we're, we're very close.